Hi, I'm Ted. Welcome to another Schooly Conversion video. In today's video, we're going to put in a mortar bed shower pan and uh, tile our shower. Alright, so we're working on the shower here. And uh, we got it framed out. And we're going to do a a mortar pan here, obviously, it's the title of the video. And so, said so put, uh, before I put the first, a couple things. I, I have never done this before. <laughs> so, one of those things where uh, there's, this isn't the only way or even necessarily the right way, it's just gonna be my way, the way I did it. So, um, the way I think I'm gonna do it is I wanna put a base layer of mortar down first to provide the slope and then the liner on top of that so that the liner itself actually has a slope so if any water does get down there um, it will slope in towards the drain and so I've got to get my base in first and um, it said put some tar paper or something down the floor so that uh, the moisture doesn't wick into the floor I didn't necessarily have tar paper but I have this poly here so I'm just gonna set this down just to keep like I said just to keep the moisture from going into the floor then I got this uh, this lathe, metal lathe here. Yeah. Alright, let's go mix some mortar. just about like a snowball. All right, I'm supposed to have uh, a quarter inch slope uh, per foot. <laughs> Don't have a whole lot of feet here, so really a half an inch will do it. Um, but I gave myself an inch all the way around, give myself just a little bit of extra. And again, I'm gonna put another, uh, put the liner on top of this coat and then more mortar on top of that. So I didn't wanna go too high either. So um, we're just gonna pack it in to that line around the edge. I put some duct tape over the drain hole there, so in. It's always a good idea to work with gloves because Anyway, the lime and the cement's pretty harsh on your skin. Alright, we got our motor pan dried overnight. It really should dry a little bit more until this afternoon before I put the next coat on it. But at least I think I'll get everything laid out so it's ready to go. This is my shower pan liner. It's way bigger than I need, but it's the smallest size I had there. Awkward safe shower pan. Doesn't make things very easy. Kind of cramped quarters down in here. Get <laughs> the sun coming in. Uh, anyway, so uh, it's the next day. Uh, I filled this uh, with water last night to check for leaks. And uh, again, this <laughs> this design element is terrible. Don't do this. Uh, I just kind of trying to work around this wheel well, and I decided that you know putting the shower way up here is too small, and so maybe this shelf would be great for putting shampoo and things on it. But then water's going to drain, so I need to catch here. So. That's sort of the theory behind it, even though it's kind of awkward. So 
Um, I had to sort of make some cuts and glue that up. So I'm going to vacuum the water out of here now and then uh, check for leaks. silicone around the drain here. Seen some conflicting reports about it. Some people say put it right around the edge. Other people say put it around this little ring here on the outside. Put it around that ring on the outside. roofing nails and we'll fold up the corners here and get everything secured. Now to put the mining collar on, just make a, an X and leave the, leave the flaps out. It keeps water I guess from backing up and coming up through in case that ever does happen. And secure those bolts. All right, I, uh, I got my drain height set at really. I think it's supposed to be like two inches to three inches, but boy, I'm getting close to the ceiling there. So I'm going to try to cut it down like an inch and five eighths, I guess. I'll put some other layer of mesh and hopefully keep it cracking. And then, so my, again, my slope is going to be a quarter inch per foot, and I'm barely two feet, so I don't even have to go a half an inch there. So um, I cut a piece of scrap here and I'm just gonna rather than have to keep measuring snap lines I'm just gonna set that at the bottom make sure that that's gonna be okay and draw a line that'll be my fill line I got some Stone, I'm going to pack in around the drain, keep motor out of the weep hole. Tried, tried mixing mortar with a power mixer last time. I didn't really like the way it came out. It was too hard in a bucket. Tried the old-fashioned way. Make these masonry hose got these holes in it and the, as you chop it into it the mortar goes through these holes and mixes it up pretty good. Had this, uh, we built this house, I hired a mason to help me with this Russian fireplace and I said to kind of chop the mortar in. second part up there so we made a scribe stick with just a point and a hole drilled in the bottom that fits the sharpie marker and put my square there put that at the top and I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make some dots going across here Then we can do it. Get the 
slide a little bit more going down. Sometimes trying to slide it and it gets out of whack is sometimes a little bit more awkward. So I think I'll double check this one more time, put some extra points in there, and then uh, I'll cut this out and make sure it's accurate before I put it on the uh, back of board. The other thing that will help sometimes with the accuracy is because uh, you get the con the the con you can get the curvature in proportion, but then angling it just right sometimes is tricky if it's not perfectly square. So I just went through and measured from the ceiling down the top of the board at different points and, uh, and put those remember uh, put those measurements there. And that just gets helpful to orient this on the template. Or orient the template on the on the material. Right, let's see how we did. Here's our template. That's looking pretty darn good. tough to narrate just it's such close quarters in here but I got my mortar pan already uh, all done and I put hardy backer on all my surfaces here and I have uh, taped all the seams with some thin satin and some nylon mesh and so supposedly this stuff has got this um, waterproof covering on it so I don't have to go and red guard it um, and again with the seams and the screw holes all sort of masticed over um, plus, you know, the tile and the grout and the waterproofing. So I think it's going to be okay the way it is without having to red guard everything. So now I'm just going to work on uh, start laying the tile. I got some river rock for the floor that I'm going to put on. And I would have liked to have done the whole thing, but it's like 10 bucks a foot. And the season, as you can see, I don't know if you can see out the window, it's snowing. Uh, can't really get uh, natural rock. So I could either wait for the spring or I could just uh, do something else. So. Um, talking this with my neighbor and he gave me all this leftover subway tile which is awesome of him so uh, I'll go that route I get considered cedar too doing it all in cedar and it's still gonna be like two hundred eighty dollars just uh, just for the just to do this much so um, I guess I'll go with the, with the subway tile <laughs> bus conditions out here it's snowing and it's dark I'm trying to finish up the last tile all right so we got everything tiled that was some pretty extreme tiling last night I'm trying to finish everything up but I'm supposed to wait 24 to 72 hours before I grout it and uh, I'm gonna run out of time <laughs> I want to get it done so uh, so today I gotta, I'm gonna put the floor into the shower, and uh, I, get, I get some glimpses of the of the, my floor, my plywood subfloor. It's actually technically Advantech OSB. Go off on a tangent. Um, I see a lot of people debating about, oh, do you put plywood or OSB? And everybody says, oh, avoid OSB. And uh, you know the debate about subfloors. But I tell you what, Advantech, even though it's technically an OSB. It's treated with all these different resins and waxes, and it's designed to be water resistant. Um, I remember I, I framed or, the, or decked over my house floor when I built it, and uh, it was right around Christmas time, I guess, and I didn't actually put the timber frame up until May, and uh, so it handled all, all winter and 
stuff is awesome. So like I say, don't uh, don't worry about uh, OSB on your subfloor. But <laughs> I would be careful about uh, putting in your finished floor first. I know some people do, but um, this floor is already just trash from walking in and out and tools and everything else on it. So I always put my finished floors in last. But and the kind of same thing with the shower. Um, I want to do the walls first because um, you just end up dropping mastic and stepping on it and just kind of trashing it. So um, I'll save the floor to last. So I'll put the floor in. I'm going to do a river rock on the on the mortar pan and then I'll let that sit for you know a day and a half or so. And then maybe late tomorrow afternoon I come out and, uh, and grout everything up. So that's today's plan. I'm not sure if you've ever used these or not, but it's just the rocks and they're epoxied onto this mesh. And you can see that it has these indentations here. And then so they match up, you can, those two outcropping rocks there fit into that little indentation there. And similarly, this little indentation gets fit by those in there. So it looks pretty seamless. And then you just have to sort of peel the ones off that you don't need and figure out how, how it's going to fit. Last thing, I still haven't done this yet, but I'll probably do it when the weather warms up again a little bit before I throw in the heat, I suppose. Uh, put in a, a sealer for the grout just to keep it from being stained. And um, obviously, when the weather warms up, uh, I'll uh, put some water in and we'll test it out. We'll see how we'll see how it goes. So I think um, had uh, if I had to do it again, I'd probably maybe try to come up with a different design. Just try to work around the wheel wells. I thought it would be a pretty good use of this sort of space, but made it really kind of tricky to kind of work around them so uh, I'm not sure exactly what I would do I don't know if I take room from the bedroom or take room from the kitchen but that little jog in the shower pan certainly made things more difficult than it needed to be so um, I suppose that's it if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comments and I'll do my best uh, that I can to uh, answer them um, but thanks for coming along I certainly appreciate it as always so uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next video or hopefully down the road coming up the, water's get, uh, the water and the weather's getting warmer so hope to start seeing you out there um, like subscribe do all those things that you do certainly appreciate it thanks for watching